Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Bingham, and as you all well know, I am the nine times great granddaughter of Sarah Wilde, and I am the one who does the videos for this particular YouTube channel. So this video is the first of about three videos chronicling the life of Sarah. And this first video is called Sarah Wilde's The Story of a Colonial Woman, Part 1, The Ipswich Years. So, Sarah lived at Ipswich from the time of her family's immigration, somewhere between 1634 and 1637, when she was about eight years old, and most likely remained there until she was in her mid-30s. So today... The house lot was actually on the uh, Sydney Shercliffe River Walk, which is a relatively short walking trail. And it's an example of stunning natural beauty located alongside the Ipswich River and, of course, Ipswich, Massachusetts. The entrance to the trail is south of Sawmill Point. Houses line the top of the embankment, followed by the athletic fields and the Ipswich Town Hall. The river flows below on the other side of the trail from County Street Bridge towards the junction of Green Street and Water Street. William Averill's three-acre house lot was located approximately where the athletic fields are now situated and continued towards Green Street, then wrapped around the top of the embankment around the fields. The Averill house was possibly considered to be comfortable, albeit a small house with probably only one room, making very tight living quarters for this family of nine. William's family was considered to be of humble means, but not poor. Since he was a carpenter, the chest that William owned may have been built by him using his own timber cut from his land. Some of the other family possessions included an iron pot, a brass pot, a frying pan, four pewter platters, two kettles, two beds, two sets of sheets, two blankets, and one bedstead. The full inventory, including all of the movables and cattle, totaled 50 pounds, which is today about $2,270. So William did not live above his means. He was considered to be quite frugal, in fact. In 1657, a few years after William's death, Stephen Dow reported that it was quite a while before he ate and drank what the Averills had because he did not trust that it was good. The fact that the family possessed only what was needed, coupled with the tight living quarters and two beds for nine people, probably led to some interesting conversations as the family navigated around each other on a daily basis. Unfortunately, it is not known about the relationships between Sarah and her six siblings during her younger years. What will become evident in a later video is Sarah's close relationship with her brother William when they were both adults. According to the law of the day, the Avils could not own clothing or furniture which was considered to be flashy or ornate. The Averill possessions were to reflect a life of simplicity. For Sarah's daily dress, she would have worn a shift until the age of seven. Going forward, she would have dressed similar to the other adult females in her house. Her shift would now have been an undergarment worn to protect her clothing from her natural body oils. Sarah would have also worn socks or woolen stockings. Over her shift, she would have worn a petticoat covered with a long gown or a skirt. An apron finished the outfit. The colors worn were so somber, brownish colors. Never black, as black dye was very expensive and hard to obtain. Since Sarah most likely had long hair, she would have parted it in the middle and tied it under a coif, which was a tight-fitting cap. Hair was not to be seen in the 1600s. 
Sarah would have also worn a cape or coat to protect her during the cold or inclement weather. As a child in Ipswich, Sarah would have helped with cooking and washing with all that it entailed. As she got older, Sarah would have learned the art of spinning, sewing, candle and soap making, as well as planting herbs and food preservation, to name just a few of the chores. Not much is known regarding Sarah's life outside her home during her time in Ipswich, except that she was presented before the Ipswich court twice. Sarah, at 22 years old, was brought before the Ipswich court the first time in November of 1649, and she was charged with fornication with a Thomas Wardall. Now, Thomas does not appear in court to answer the charges brought against him. So one can surmise that Thomas left Essex County before the court date because his name does not appear again in any future court records. Also, it is only Sarah who is sentenced to be whipped. As all of the facts of this case are not completely laid out in the records and files of the quarterly courts of Essex County publications, it remains unclear as to what really happened between Sarah and Thomas. Further investigation is taking place by you know who. However, this record is evidence that Sarah was living in Ipswich, most likely with her parents at this time. The second court case takes place in May of 1663, and Sarah is brought before the Ipswich court again for wearing a scarf. It's important to reiterate that Sarah was considered to be middle to lower class and had to dress as such. For her, being seen wearing a scarf in public was considered to be excess of apparel. She was discharged and did not have to pay a fine. Again, this particular court case is also being investigated as we speak. So, as she was still single in May of 1663, and both of her parents had since been deceased, Sarah may have lived on her family house lot, which her brother, William, now had charge. Sarah may also have moved to Topsfield with William and his wife, Hannah, about a year prior. In Topsfield, William's neighbor was John Wilds, and John, a 44-year-old carpenter in 1662-1663, also lived in Ipswich as a young man. John immigrated from England, possibly as an apprentice, with William Whitred, though his brother William also sailed on the same ship. John, only 17 when he immigrated, would have either lived with William Whitred or his brother William Wilds, both of whom lived close to the Averills. The Wilds lived uh, closer to the Averills than the Whitreds did in that time. Therefore, when John's first wife Priscilla died shortly after the death of their infant son in 1663, John may have felt a dire need to find a new wife to take care of his children for the ultimate survival of his family. So, John and Sarah married the 23rd of November 1663 at Topsfield. All of his daughters at that time were under the age of 10. And if John and Sarah were in love at first, one cannot be sure. However, John's love for Sarah is evidenced in the existing documents for her witchcraft trial almost 30 years later. So click on the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Please comment below if you are an Averill or a Wilds descendant. Part 2, Sarah Wilds, the story of a colonial woman, the Topsfield years, will be uploaded on or before September 7th, 2021. I will discuss more of her relationship with her husband and her son and some of the accusations leading to her witchcraft trial in 1692. Thank you very much.